You're listening to the Flickcast, a podcast about stuff nerds love. I am Chris Ulrich, and joining me, my co-host Joe Dealworth. Hi, Joe. Hi, Chris. But I, I do have a quick question: Are you really Chris, or are you, are you asking me if I'm a scroll? Yes, be, yeah. yes, I am. Because well, you know um, what? You wouldn't know the difference because I would take not only take the form of of Chris and also take my memories too. If you, if oh, you that's understand. true. Yes. So what's the? So I guess the question is, what is the difference? I don't know. It's, it's maybe, maybe this is. It's, it's okay if you're a scroll. I'm fine with it. So. Which actually fits in with what uh, what our sort of, uh, I don't want to say theme, because we don't have a theme, but it sort of fits in with the things we're going to talk about today, because we're going to discuss uh, the first episode or two of Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds, which the second episode deals with this a little bit too, like the subject yes, of identity. And then also uh, Secret Invasion Episode 1. And a few other things, probably, as we do, go off into tangents, um, you know, oh, me some picks we and whatnot. Uh, but I did enjoy uh, talking about Raiders last week, and some people have commented that they also enjoyed talking about yeah, Raiders, so that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, with And with, of course, Pick of Destiny coming pick out. Pick of Destiny. I, I'm just going to call it that. No one can stop me. <laughs> um, then uh, coming out soon, then I know that people are going to want to discuss Raiders again. But, Ra- I mean, there was also, like, Raiders was 40 years old, right? That was the other thing. So Yes, exactly. That's so. That seems like a long time ago. <laughs> that's a few... I, I don't even remember what I was doing 40 years ago, but I know I was, well, I was watching probably, Raiders I was probably, at some point. Yeah, I was probably seeing Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's one yeah. thing. So, um, yeah, I saw it in the theater. Um, I, you know what's funny? I don't remember... Because I remember seeing Star Wars for sure. That's like yes. a super yes. vivid memory uh, still to this day of seeing Star Wars. I saw it with my parents actually, who were very nice to take me, but I didn't see it like opening day. I think it was like three or four days after. But I saw Raiders in the theater, and I don't remember if my parents went. I think I went alone with some friends. I'm pretty sure because obviously I wanted to see it because Harrison Ford and Han Solo was in it. Right, and right. So, of course, <clears throat> I don't remember seeing it. I guess it didn't ho- hold as much of an impression. As Star Wars did. I don't know. It's weird. How much I love it now, it's funny. I mean, I still love Star Wars, obviously, but but Raiders is such an important film to me now. But I don't. I cannot picture it in my mind seeing it in the theater. So I I anyway, know anyway. I did. I have kind of a glimpse of fragment memory of seeing it in the theater because sure. uh, I know like um, my mom was the one who took me to to see Star Wars. It was actually a few months after it came out because I, I think I talked about it, I was visiting my dad for the summer and then when i came back home my mom's like oh you got to go see this movie i've already seen it like four times and we went like several nice. weekends in a row to go see it but um she would have also taken me to see uh, empire um and then the following year right. raiders i think because the same thing it's like oh han solo's in this we gotta go see it um and then of course uh the year after that was star trek 2 and several other things but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I know I saw it in the theater when it first came out. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. You're right. I, I think, yeah, the, I think the only, like, one of the things I remember is the scene where he swings on the vine and you first hear the indie theme, da, 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 you know, he yeah. swings into the water and then the Jovitos are coming to get him. Oh, no, I remember also laughing when he's like running over the mountain or running over the, he comes into view with all the dust on him. I remember that being super funny. Um, but I think because because it was it was like scarier, it was different than Star Wars. I was like, wow, what is this? This is so this is so yes. different. This is so uh, it's like a dude already died. It's a couple of dudes already died. What is happening? This is weird. I vividly um, remember the boulder scene, seeing it yeah, on the yeah. widescreen, and maybe maybe I didn't see it originally, and it was, I'm thinking a re-release. But I know for a fact that I have a vivid memory of that on a big movie screen. So. Because I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. That was, it was like, "Oh my god, it's going to roll me up, you know, roll over me." Oh my god! So yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I love that Spielberg still, you know, to this day, kind of does the same thing. But he showed you the boulder as Indy was going in. Right? He did. It's like, yes. Here's the here's the trap. It's going to happen later. Just here's the stuff. It's not going to come out of nowhere. It's already there. But what, who designed something like that? I and mean, that doesn't seem like very practical because if, if it gets disturbed, then the whole place collapses and how do you get your artifact out of there? It's well, like, it's like I said, how, because they did find some dead people mm-hmm. in there. Who who goes in and resets all the traps? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Do they reset themselves? They have to rebuild, yeah, rebuild the whole thing and set it back right. up again. <laughs> Well, that's because Forrestal got killed, right? Right. And he's like, so then the, then the whole like, swinging or the, the fence that comes across or the gate that impaled him it just resets itself, which is, yeah, how does it reset? Who does yeah. come along? Maybe the Hovitos come along and reset the trap. That was like the same thing in Last Crusade where, 
you know, you had to step on the right squares or you fell to your death. It's like, who, yeah. how did they rebuild that, <laughs> rebuild that every time? So. Well, I always wondered about that too, because they show the underside of it and it's like, they're all unsupported. Right. So how there's are, no, like, yeah. there's no like infrastructure underneath supporting the certain steps. So what happens? Yeah. It's like, no one's ever been dumb enough to go in there before. So. I guess, anyway, but you know, that's, I guess you don't want to look too closely at it. But so. then how would they have the clues <clears throat> if no one had ventured in there before? I don't know. But anyway, but don't while, think about while it we're at the, While we're on the subject, how does an ark, you know, with 10, with ten, the 10 commandments dust, uh, kill a bunch of Nazis? <laughs> so <laughs> right. don't think about it too much. Right. Right. Exactly. Don't. Don't overthink it. So uh, all, the only thing that you really understand is that Indy shoots a dude in, a couple of times, and then he whips a couple of people, and you know a monkey dies, unfortunately, because of oh, uh, bad dates. Monkey. Although he's an asshole monkey, but I think he was a stunt monkey. I don't think he actually. Died, <laughs> you so. don't think they killed a real monkey? <laughs> I, well, they were out of the country, maybe, but I doubt. <laughs> uh, I mean, there was no like uh, you know uh, SPCA or whatever it is monitoring the sets back then. So I don't. Know I bet monkey. he was a trained monkey. It's like okay, Guido, we yeah. need you to lay down and. Not, and <laughs> Guido. And hold your breath for 10 seconds. And monkey is like, ar- got well, it. He put his arm over his head like, oh, I'm dying. Yes. You know, yeah. Very, yes, dramatic, exactly. very dramatic. Yeah. Uh, anyway, apparently they, they to get him to, to do the Heil Hitler, it took him like 40 times. They just like kept rolling until they finally did it. So it's a very important bit. You got to commit to the bit, you know? Yeah, come and, on. And his agent took him aside and was like, listen, I need, really dude, need you to do yeah. this. Okay, we need to, this needs to happen today. Nazi monkey. It's <laughs> yeah. hard. But uh, anyway. We can't put this off. You got to really do this. Come on. It's got to it's gotta happen today. Yeah. With everybody, you know, we're, we're, we're losing the light, man. We got to do <laughs> yeah, it. So, exactly. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. See? Tangents. I told you it was going to happen. I know. I You were warned, everybody. Um so, all right, uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention. We're going to definitely talk about Star Trek, uh, and we're going to definitely talk about uh, Secret Invasion. But the only other thing I wanted to mention uh, is that The Bear is back. It is. I'm very excited about that. I've already binged the entire second season, and much to my disappointment. I'm like, damn, it's over already. So good. Uh, it breaks. It's such a great show. It breaks the characters wide open, and you get to see all their dirty bits. and Not their dirty bits, but you know what I mean. Whoa. They're all their humanity, show, all, all their humanity laid bare, and there's a fuck ton of great like supporting characters and actors that just show up, and it's like there's one episode in particular where there's like a ton of super cool cameos, which uh, which are you know, I heard it's watching. just a stream of cameos this year. <clears throat> it is this, especially that episode. Yeah, it's like the the dinner episode, the Christmas episode. It's like very good. I mean, some of those characters reappear uh, in later episodes, but for the most part, it's very heavy of with. Uh, with terrific cameos, of course, everybody is is ter- is great on the show. All the actors, and of course, the cameos they get, the guest stars, we'll call them, are also terrific. So, yeah. okay. Anyway, but if you haven't watched The Bear, now is the time to go back and watch season one, and then watch season two because it's a. I like this because I have two seasons to binge. This is great. You do. You have two seasons to binge, and you definitely need to get on the silo train because it got picked up by Apple TV for a second season, and uh, they've gone to the penultimate episode so far. I like saying penultimate. And then uh, the season finale is uh, is this week or next week, I, I should say. I like penultimate uh, and almost as much as I like that. I like the uh, anti-penultimate, which is the third episode before the finale. It's crazy. Right, it's right before the, yes. the penultimate. Yes, the penultimate. exactly. Yes. And then the ultimate episode. Boom. Boom. Yes. Rebecca Ferguson uh, kicking ass in that show too. And obviously she'll be kicking ass in Mission Impossible, uh, whatever it's called, Dead Reckoning, uh, part one. And uh, also good to see Haley Atwell out there in the world doing stuff. Yeah. And Palm Clementoff. And everybody. It's Clementif. Clementif. She plays a clown who kills people. I don't know. It it just all looks crazy. I know it's going to be freaking off the chain. I'm going to love it. So I I just love the uh, conversations with um, McQuarrie, you know, talking about basically like, yeah, we have a script when we start, but then Tom and I just kind of change it as we go. And we just kind of wing it. Yeah. And I like the idea of for this one, for part one, it's like, so we did that crazy motorcycle stunt, like first thing so that, you know, if he got injured or died, uh, we wouldn't put. Uh, we wouldn't interrupt the movie. I'm like, jeez, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, or they wouldn't. They wouldn't have to. Well, I would feel like you would do that last because then you would think because then you have the whole movie done, right? Then you have the whole movie done. You don't have to worry about Tom. Like yeah. if he dies, you I could... suppose if he dies, you're not going to finish the movie anyway. But well, <clears> maybe. I mean, there, I don't know. There are movies that have, people have died in that they finished, but <clears throat> I guess with someone like Tom Cruise, I'd be true. like, ooh, maybe we shouldn't finish this. 
Or... Well, I know what you're, I know what you're referring to specifically, probably, but uh, yeah. that's a totally different situation. And it was basically done, right? And they only yeah, that's a true. Few, that's true. A few CG bits here and there, and I feel like they could probably just AI, you know, freaking Tom Cruise now. Yeah. Um, put put uh, someone else's body in Poppy's face on something, and go ah, yeah, and then just have him run a lot. <laughs> that was but, a good impression. Uh, anyway. Yeah, you know, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, that's that didn't happen though. So luckily, we don't have to worry about it because you know why Tom Cruise is still around. He did not go in a submarine. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> nice. I had, I, well done. I had, to, I had to. I had to put that in there. Well, I'm sorry. also Zemu has his back, so we're good. Word. Yeah. Exactly. So is it Zemu or Zemu? I don't know. I think it's either one. Who cares? It's I don't not know. Real I don't know anyway. So. Well, exactly. I don't think we should mention Scientology. Cause no, we should. They'll sue us. But we'll get notoriety that way. Notoriety, Notor- right? I can't really? speak Really? Notoriety? Okay. What, are you drinking already? <sighs> I should be. Well, still, you know. It's still early. Well, so, but I'm smoking meat, and Traeger, in their recipes, uh, always has their steps by um, how many beers you can consume for each step, so... Um, Seriously? That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. Wait, did you say you're smoking mead or meat? Meat. meat. Oh, I thought you said smoking I am, mead. I, I am brewing. I, the... uh, I am. I have three one-gallon meads going, too. So. Gotcha. I thought mead was like a, a specific strain of weed or something for, for Oregon. No. But, uh, dude, I'm so high on mead right now, bro. Not yet. I mean, probably. It could be. <laughs> I should, don't know. You should just You should just do it. Just do it, man. Yes. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to bring us back to reality okay. Here, please you know, do, or at least to our version of reality. So, uh, do you want to do Star Trek, or do you want to do Secret? Inv- you know what? Let's do Secret Invasion first. I know Secret Invasion okay. is more controversial for you. Um, I here's my feeling about Secret Invasion. I love Nick Fury. I love the character Nick Fury. I love Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. I wish they had done this show with Nick Fury ten years ago. I wish that uh, it was more Samuel Jackson in his prime, if you want to call it that. I know what, I mean, I see that he can still be effective. Um, and I'm enjoying the show. And I think some of his sort of uh, hobbling around is just him faking hobbling around to make people think he's weaker. But yeah. uh, I'm enjoying the show. I, I, you know, it's a slow burn for sure. Uh, and I don't mind that. Um, <clears throat> and I like the scrolls, the whole Secret Invasion storyline, Brian Bendis's version of it uh, in the comics was, was terrific. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm in, it's just, it's got some, it's got some uh, things that I didn't love, but that's okay. So I, I don't think you liked it though. Did you, or did you? Um, I liked a lot of it. All right. So, um, and Amelia Clark, awesome. I'm going to spoil the hell out of it here in a minute. So if you haven't oh, watched spoilers, it yet, yeah, <clears throat> huge spoilers. Yeah. So if you haven't watched it yet, you're going to want to, I, mean, uh, I think wait, the big spoiler but... is, out, is out there already, but yeah. Um, I do like the idea of a, a Nick Fury because, you know, we've always seen Nick Fury, as they pointed out in the show, that he, you know, he's always three steps ahead and he's always, he always sees the chessboard and knows what's going on and he doesn't anymore and he was thrown off his game by getting blipped and um, not knowing how to deal with that when he came back. Um, so I kind of like that and I like the idea that there's... Um, it's funny because it seems like the Marvel shows, TV shows, are the only ones where we're really seeing the ramifications of the blip. The movies just kind of go, oh, yeah, that happened. And well, they don't have on. time for that. I know. Probably, but yeah. So it's kind of nice to see those ramifications. So I'm okay with that. And I like the the tone of it as a political thriller. It feels a, lo- a lot like um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, and it's great to see that it's got tendrils all through the, the Marvel Universe. Um and I was really excited and really enjoyed it up until the point that they fridged Maria Hill. <laughs> I'm like, really? And it was already bad enough that the other, you know, female character that everyone had kind of expected to be in the show was killed off screen uh, and fridged. And now they had to do it with Maria Hill. So the only way you have to get Talos uh, energized to to do something. And the only way that you can get Nick Fury back on his game is to f- kill the female character. Really? Uh, that just, well, really, yeah, really I mean, terrible. It, I mean, I get it. I think it would have been more, if it's like, if we had to sacrifice a character to get, um, get Fury back on his game, it should have been Talos. <laughs> not, not Maria Hill, because you already established earlier in the episode that, you know, he sees Maria Hill for the first time forever, and he's like, sup, anyway. Uh, but he sees Talos, and they're like, 
have this bond that they've built for 30 years. So I uh, just like, really, you're going to, all right, let's kill the female characters. Yeah. Uh, why not? Because we still got one female character. We're okay. <sighs> so <clears throat> I, yeah. I was with you and I was on that show. I mean, uh, Talos uh, wife being killed. Uh, just in mention, I was like, mm, that's not a good look. <clears throat> and then the ending, I'm like, yeah. are you serious? Really? So I, yeah. Well, I'm sure that was that was done primarily to say, yes, this definitely is Maria Hill. It's not the scroll version I of Maria know, Hill. But so I'm just she's like, definitely did. Well, you got to have stakes, bro. You got to have stakes. And you got to have. So you killed a uh, female character. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree with you that that's a bummer <laughs> because, you know, but who else would, who else is going to be Ross? No one gives a fuck about him, really. Talos. Who else is. Cl- who else? Well, you can't kill Talos, though. Yeah, you, you can't can. kill Ben Mendelsohn's character. You can't. Because that will uh, also uh, galvanize his daughter into coming back to the side of the angels. And she ends up partnering yeah. with Fury. But no, you got to kill. Well, who who do we have? Well, I don't know. We killed off uh, Black Widow already. So we can't can't be her. Um, yeah. Who? Let's let's look at the, the female scorecard roster here. Oh, Who's left? Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. So it's like... I, just, I like to think there. I like to think more thought than that went into it. That it wasn't just let's kill the, kill the woman. I'm but, sure uh, there was, but it's like there's such <clears throat> but it's, a yeah. horrible trope, and it's been done to death. No jo- no pun intended. And it's like it, if any, you know, I know a lot of times uh, when shows aren't written the way people like, they like to say, "Oh, that was just lazy writing." This to me feels like lazy writing. It's like, well. We gotta we gotta show stakes in the first episode, and we gotta get Fury back in the game. What do we? Ah, oh, let's kill his pal Maria Hill. And I'm like, nobody said maybe we shouldn't do that. Oh, I'm or, sure I'm sure some people did say that, but <sighs> I, I imagine that the Marvel Brain Trust went around the room, and some people were like, maybe we shouldn't do that. But then they're like, well, what's the alternative? We can't kill Talos because he 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 figures in the next Marvels movie. He's not dead in the Marvels, so he has to be alive. In Maria this. Hill supposedly is in the Marvels movie too, which I don't get. But well, maybe the Marvels takes place before yeah. this. Then I don't know. But there was a I well, and again, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they just Marvel hates women. I don't know. But it, it, I feel like at some point there was a discussion and this was the, well, if not the most logical, at least the easiest. So I guess you're right. It was lazy in a way, but uh, yeah, it was yeah. like, who, maybe... who can we afford? Cause maybe they talked to Colby Smulders and she was like, yeah, I'll come it's back as long as it's just for, I don't really want to keep playing this character. I, you know, I'll come well, back. That could for be. One maybe more. she wanted a, a definitive end to her. That her could be, but I'm just still like, did nobody, or at least a yeah. few, somebody's go, this isn't going to look good because <laughs> well, we have we'll a never, tendency we'll to know. kill off the female characters. You know. Well, look what happened to Gamora. She died, but then came back. So there yeah. you go. I mean, yeah. obviously it's a you know, comic book movie and there's scrolls involved. So maybe she wasn't completely dead and didn't turn into a scroll and she could come back. Maybe that's a su- surprise, even though, you know, well, Colby Smulders is like, oh no, I think I'm probably done. That could be a surprise. Maybe she does come back, but I'm just like, that you know, you really, can also really make the doesn't case. look good. Like you did with Gamora, I mean, it is a multiverse. You could yes. always have Maria yeah. Hill from Universe, whatever, come back. So it doesn't. It's not like they can never again. Like you said, it's comic book movies. People die and they come back. I mean, Captain America gets assassinated a couple times in the comics. Yeah. I right? mean, he comes I mean, back, it's so terrible it's like, as you know, Joss Whedon is to women in real life. At least he was smart in he, the Avengers movie to you know. Well, we got to kill someone. Well, let's not kill the female character. Let's kill Coulson. So, although yeah. although ironically, Buffy died in Buffy. Well, well that's <laughs> but, true. But then, but she was, but then she came back. But she was okay. So. She came back. It she came right. back from the Hellmouth or whatever. Yeah. But uh, so he, I, he, he did. He I did just, kill her. But she was the lead of the show. It actually was called Buffy, right? So. Right, right. Exactly. It's like, well, <clears> she's no, you're, I hear you. I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you. That just really bummed me out, and I'm like, wow, that's. Yeah, uh, and I haven't seen anybody say anything. Maybe it's just me. I haven't seen anyone on, on online saying anything about it. Maybe there is, and I just don't follow those folks but i was just like are you serious <laughs> did you really just do that because i expected yeah. her to turn into a scroll or it'd be like she's not quite dead but we got to abandon her and she gets captured by the i don't know but i was just like wow that's well i mean she geez. lays there bleeding out whether she's actually dead or not i don't know because they did have that overhead shot uh, well, well she, she did she did the 
you know, stop mid sentence and look off with a classy look. That's the, the it was it was you. That's the Hollywood sign of oh yeah, they're dead when they you know staring at the middle distance. Yes, basically. exactly. Um, and she did. You know, uh, I saw somebody was talking about how oh now she thinks it was Nick Fury who killed her at the end. I'm like, I don't think she thinks that. Well, it doesn't matter. She's dead. <laughs> so, well, I know, you but know. now Nick has Fury has to think that yes, you know. It was his fault. We'll see you again. Oh, well, we're going to kill the, the female sidekick right. to galvanize. Now he's going to be like back to being Fury in the second episode, right? He's so. pissed. He's going to put that eye patch on at some point. And then, because even Samuel Jackson was interviewed and he said that Nick Fury without the eye patch, he's more vulnerable and yes. you know, whatever. So, so I was just put like, the eye patch on. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know. Here's the thing about somebody like Nick Fury I don't know that he could ever do his job effectively if he really gave a shit about anybody. I kind of feel like as bummed out as he is about, about uh, Maria Hill, I don't know if he's that bummed about it. Cause he kind of is a dick to her a lot of times too. True. I don't know. I don't think he, I don't even think he, uh, I mean, I think he just uses people. I think he's, a, he uses everybody. He uses the Avengers. He uses the death of Coulson to go. I mean, he faked That's that true. car with blood on it to get, yeah. to get the Avengers together. He's not, he's a fucking manipulator. So, I don't know that he's that broken up about it. I don't know that it's that much of a trigger for him. I think he was already on the road to this is bullshit. We have to fight these guys. That's why I think um, Talos would have been the better. But I don't think he's that close to Talos. Either. He looked like just he was. He's like, I mean, they were big, he's almost that, kissed, man. I mean, come on. Well, that's that's the that's what the scrolls do, right? Know, that's established in in in, Cap, in Captain Marvel. But how do we know he's not just faking it? That's Although. True. I saw something who was like talking about what he's talking about. I know some pretty, you know, some good, attractive scrolls. You're not one of them. It's like, how, what is he get, like getting it on with the scrolls up in the space kind of thing? Could be. It's like, pretend to be Black Widow. Pretend to be, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, show. You, you, well, you know what, dude? If 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 it's a, well, whatever. I'm yeah. just going to say, he's, he spent a lot of time up in space. He's, I, he's kind of bored. So. I will say, um, but I really Lena liked Horn, I don't the know. rest of the episode. And I especially liked um, Olivia Coleman's character. And I'm glad she's in oh, the yeah. main cast, which means she'll be back. Um, dude. But I, I absolutely think. Olivia think... Coleman is fucking phenomenal yes. in everything. But yeah. it's like, you, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you just. The whole scene gets elevated. Yes, like when she sees when she first sees fear. Now Samuel Jackson's good, but it's like Olivia fucking Coleman. It's like you totally believe her immediately. Yes, she yeah. is absolutely one hundred percent believable. She's a consummate, terrific actress. Amazing performance. But you know, with not, I mean, it's a, still a Marvel show. So she's like, you know, you can tell she's having a lot of fun though. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I I, and I totally believe that Fury uh, led himself to be captured. I, I think he wanted to talk to her because. I mean, oh, sure. he all of a sudden goes, I'm going to go for a walk. And it's like, uh, and, and actually, uh, Fury being Fury, I don't think it was necessarily specifically her, but he was like, ah, I want to go find out who's watching us. I'm going to go for a walk and see who grabs me. Well, <laughs> and as you saw, it's fucking everybody who's watching yes. him. All of those yes. people watching him on the street end up being, you know, he the guy ends up shape-shifting into all of those people. Yes. Like the guy in the bar and the woman who's making out with the dude and the little girl with the ball who's creepy as fuck, by the way. Yes. Um, who shows up later. And I'm like, never trust any kids, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with, I guess, why is this little girl in the middle of the night in an alleyway? It's weird. I, I did um, say, I did see people going, why didn't he react and out him at that point? I'm like, cause he's fury. He's like, okay, so I know who, I know who the scrolls are that are after us. Cause the people saying weird things and looking at me weird, I'm going to, I'm going to keep yeah. my eye on them. And see where this goes. you know, right. So, well, yeah, yeah he, he doesn't, he, yeah, I, but I think you're right. I, I'm sure it was. And no, it's not because he went to a shawarma truck, although there was a shawarma truck. There but, was, uh, yes. But uh, I, you're right. He's just trying to find out. He needs to f get more information. But I'm pretty sure he figured that MI6 would probably pick him up. So he wanted to talk to Olivia Cole. Well, he was obviously prepared because he bugged her office, right? So he would I figure he, be, just ca you know, he just carries bugs around with him. All that could be. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, that's why I'm saying for the most part, I thought, wow, this is really, really an interesting show because we're getting a lot. Uh, uh, character depth, but it's got some good intrigue. Um, it's written really interesting. Um, you know, the daughter being kind of playing both sides was kind of interesting. Um, and then it just threw me out of it at the end. I'm like, <sighs> so I, I'll keep watching it, but I'm just, I'm kind of bummed that they went there and did what yeah. they did. So <clears throat> I wonder, yeah, I, I mean, again, I'm sure that, that it, 
was a discussion, obviously. It was not a uh, something they did lightly, I hope, especially uh, given today's sort of climate, I suppose. Yeah. But I'm sure that was the, the decision they came to that uh, was the only way to sort of go forward. And there's probably a lot of reasons. And they also also you know know in their back of their mind that it's not nothing's permanent. You can always change things. Look what happened with Gamora. I mean, Gamora's right, dead. Right. Um, <clears throat> so they can always bring Maria Hill back if they want to. Maria Hill from a different whatever. But uh, I, I'm enjoying it, I, and yes. I like that uh, that uh, it's sort of a grounded kind of on the you know boots on the ground spy show, yeah. which I appreciate. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what 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 should be for Fury. Plus, it's also cheaper to make too. <laughs> Um, if there's no like super powered people, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely watch the whole thing. And I've always been looking for a Nick Fury show or a Nick Fury movie or whatever. So one of my favorite characters in Marvel is Nick Fury. So I think that, um, well, it's great seeing Rhodey too. And he's supposedly a main character in this. So now I'm curious because, um, we have, uh, was it Dermot Mulroney? I keep, I can't pronounce it. Dermot Mulroney is the president. Um, yeah. but they've already said in, uh, the Captain America movie coming out in a year or two that Harrison Ford is taking up the mantle of, uh, uh, right. of, uh, Thunderbolt Ross and he will be president in, right. in that. So something happened. I wonder if something happens in this that we get to see, maybe he turns out to be a scroll, um, but, or, or he's not a scroll, and then he has to be replaced by a president that is a scroll. So maybe yeah, uh, Harrison Ford is yeah. a, a replicant the entire time. He so, is a replicant, yeah. yes. But it's great seeing uh, Rhodey. Uh, it's interesting that he's an advisor to the president, um, and I'm curious to see how he plays into this story, um, and which is interesting because he showed up briefly in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, mm-hmm. So now he's uh, he's showing up much more, and then now his. Uh, what was going to be a series, Armor Wars, is being turned into a movie. So, good for him. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, do you think that Ross was a scroll the entire time? The whole time, yeah. You know, like even back to uh, Wakanda Forever and all that. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. What, I don't know. what would be his What would be his motivation? Although I feel like he was probably human at that point, and then once they broke him out of jail. Uh, at the end of Wakanda Forever, uh, maybe that's when the scroll took over. But does that mean that Ross is in like one of those pods now with his brain kind of getting sucked out? I I, he would have to be, I guess. So yeah, well, because that the the scroll Ross knew an awful lot about like Fury's on saber. Blah, blah. He yeah. knew all of. He seemed like he knew all of his memories. So so that means Ross is probably like grabbed up, or he could have been a a scroll all the time and maybe the one that they broke out of jail was actually the scroll decoy who knows it'd be nice but, if they uh, could do like the comics but i i don't think they will um is like there's going to be you know in, in the middle of the season there's an episode where they you know finally find the warehouse the scrolls flee but they find everyone who's been uh you know mimicked and it's like oh you know it's like oh colson he was all he's been a scroll for and they're like how many how long have they been here? This one's been here for, you know, th- this Tony Stark has been here for 20 years. He's really, uh, Tony's not yeah. dead. It was really a scroll. Well, I wonder if they do, I, don't, I doubt they'll do like super scrolls though, because in the comics, the super yes. scrolls could actually mimic the powers of the people that they were they were taking over. So yeah. I, do, I wonder if they, they were not going to go that way because then that would make it a show about powered people. I, I actually reread sure the uh, comic book miniseries uh, leading yeah. up to this. I knew they weren't going to do it exactly the same, but it was, uh, uh, they did a part in, uh, in the comic where a spaceship crashes, a scroll ship crashes and is full of all these uh, superheroes. Um, and some of them were there to greet the ship. So it's like, okay, so who is a scroll and who's not a scroll? Yeah. Um, and so, and some of them had been uh, impersonated for years and had died. And, and, and so it was pretty interesting the way they did it in the miniseries. I don't think they'll do it to that extent in the show, but maybe they will. It could be, you know, they could have some cameos from, it's like, Oh, Hawkeye, he's been a scroll. Wow. That's crazy. But, um, well, they can't get Hawkeye cause he, that guy can barely walk right now, but yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, well, all he has to do is lay there in a, you know, oh, that's a good point. Brain. That's a good point. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, well, you know, I guess there's a, there's an opportunity if they want, I don't to, think they'll uh, do that, but retcon some stuff or whatever, or rewrite things. And we're not even sure this is taking place on this earth, on this universe or in this, in this world. We don't know where we are. We don't know anything anymore. That's right. It's all nothing is, nothing's connected anymore. No, I'm just kidding. 
all right, we, it's the multiverse, man. So it could be anywhere. We don't know. This could be Earth, uh, whatever, instead of Earth, whatever. So I don't even know the names, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. So, which I guess I guess means that uh, you shouldn't be too upset about uh, about Colby Smulders. Maybe she's uh, still alive. Still bad writing. Anyway, um, well, it is, but unless it's a MacGuffin, and then it's it not. could be. It could be. Maybe they find that warehouse, and it's like, wait. What's Maria Hill doing here? Whoa. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, they have to be aware. They have to be mind blown. They have to be aware. Just because she didn't deconstruct into a scroll in the shot that we were in doesn't mean it didn't happen later. Right. Um, right. Or whatever. So, Or she's just dead. Or none of this matters because it's a TV show. Well, yes, I know well there's saying. that too. It's just... That I do think Olivia, uh, Olivia Coleman, awesome. Uh, Amelia Clark, terrific. Yes. Uh, always happy to see her. Um. Yeah, it's a good cast. And, of course, Samuel Jackson is always dependable. Um, I believe, uh, is it Martin Freeman in the main cast, or was he a special guest? Um, I think he's always in the main cast because he's a... Because you know. he could be... Uh, we may find out what happened to Ross. Well, I don't know that you get Martin Freeman for one episode. You know what I'm saying? Even if he is a guest star, you would get him for multiple episodes. Like, no, you know, he is a get, guest. Uh, Sorry, he is a guest. You get uh, you get uh, Julie Lee Dreyfus for a couple of episodes. So I guess you could make the case that Julie Lee Dreyfus's character has been a scrawl all the time too. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. And I also like the fact that, that Olivia Coleman's character is Sil- Sonia Fallsworth, which I wonder yes. if she's related to Fallsworth from the Helen Commando. So that's why. Yeah, I'm really exactly. Because <clears throat> they did that once before, right? In in one of the Spider Man movies, the this principal of the school was related to one of the other Helen Commandos, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't remember which one though. But uh, and I, but yes, I the Fallsworth is 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 not a a name that just rolls off the tongue. So I was like, oh, I wonder if it's yeah, exactly. If it's relationship, well, to but you know what? It's it's it's, Mar- it's Disney and Marvel, whatever. They just keep everything, uh, keep everything. Yeah, because the Fallsworth uh, is uh, Captain. I don't know. I can't keep my character straight now. But he's a Union Jack. <clears throat> he's a superhero in the UK back in the war. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. I, I think that you'll see because um, obviously Rhodey is going to be in in more of this. Yeah, but I don't think that he can be he could be a scroll because they're not going to. You know they're not going to jeopardize armor wars or whatever later, right. so he's going to have to continue. Um, but some of the some of the sort of supporting characters, definitely, obviously Maria Hill, but also Martin Freeman could be, you know, sacrificed as it were, I suppose. But uh, mm, anyway, yeah. I think that uh, the that Kingsley Benadire is or Benadir is also a good villain. He's definitely he's definitely uh, has that presence to be a good, as graphic. I think he's good. Uh, you know, what's interesting to me too, is there's that scene where he's like sitting there throwing all the sugar in his coffee or his tea yes. or whatever. There's a fine history of, <laughs> of, uh, of villains liking sugar, I guess. So. Yeah. If they anyway. put a lot of sugar in their tea, then they're a bad, they're guy. bad people. Yeah. Well, even, even, uh, I just watched, uh, Captain Marvel, even Talos, when he first appears at, uh, at Maria Rambeau's house, he's like, he's like, you never know when you need to borrow a cup of sugar. And I'm like, dude, these guys are obsessed. And he's like drinking a shake. I'm like, well, these guys love sugar. What the hell? Exactly. So, so uh, there, there's your tell <clears throat> right there. There's your tell. Yeah, exactly. If they come to borrow a cup of sugar, they're actually scrolls. Yes. Um, so the- yeah, I just, I like Captain Marvel a lot more than I, than I, it's, I've warmed to it more. And I was sort of like indifferent to, to Brie Larson's performance, I thought she was not as not as good necessarily, but I've I've definitely come around. I think she's much better watching it. She in, was in, really in good, at, I think, in that movie, and I think in uh, Infinity War, well, Endgame. I don't know in pre in subsequent appearances as Carol Danvers, not quite as good, and I don't know if it's uh, director. Well, they shot or what, that stuff. But... They shot that stuff first, right? <laughs> That's true. She hadn't really figured out the character yeah, all of her all so. of her end game appearances that's and, true. and all the that's avengers true. movies she shot before captain marvel so she probably had more time to refine the character and that's everything. true yeah um but i am looking forward to the marvel i think that'll be a yeah good it's show, coming up so. soon i'm looking forward to it. a good good movie i should say in that show yeah um so we'll we'll keep up with secret invasion uh, obviously both of us will keep watching and yes. uh, we will uh, we'll report back um but i'm into it I'm, i like you know it's hard not to like it because of samuel jackson and everybody so I like Ben Mendelsohn too. He's a, uh, it's weird seeing him as a good guy though. Cause he's always to me been like the con one of the consummate, like bad dudes or like a kind of a dick. Yeah. He's got an in- interesting career though, man. He's been all the big franchises, man. He's in star Wars. Now he's in this, he's Marvel. Yeah, he's like all over the place. That guy, Absolutely. that guy gets around. So yeah, he's got to be Although in star he Trek has, next. So 
one yeah I, th- I feel like he should have been in star trek already right but uh, maybe not because yeah, but i guess he only had one appearance in a star wars movie i mean he was in well, one but that's yeah. not but it's still canon right so it is it's, <clears throat> now he hasn't been in star yeah. trek yet but there's still time well he's yeah he's only in his 50s he could definitely he was on the I, oa I see, which was a great show that i sorely missed. i see him as being uh as being like some kind of you know rogue captain or something but uh, i don't know like, although maybe he should be on the show with uh, when they bring back uh, Stashwick. They should bring him back to be to be alive still. I don't know why they killed that guy. I, I don't see. I don't hear. You, I don't hear you squawking about killing that dude on Star Trek. But I Picard. did squawk about it at the time. I, I, I guess you did. Yes. That's true. But they didn't kill any of the female characters. So I guess Star Trek is more progressive than Star than, yes. than Marvel, right? It's like, oh, they didn't. You know, oh, well, we'll kill Raffi. That would have been the the trope. There, there you it's go. Like, we'll kill Raffi to galvanize the you know Picard and to, the crew to go save everybody. To galvanize Worf, he'd be like, "Today is a good day to die." Yes, you know, like go nuts. Yes. Maybe I do embrace violence after all, motherfucker. Yes, I'm going to stay behind <laughs> and kill every stinking Borg. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be with you guys in a minute. Yeah, let's, let's I, take a second. I gotta clean something Just, up. I'll be right there. I gotta take care of something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with that, we should probably switch over to Star yeah, Trek. Yeah. Speaking uh, of Star Trek, Strange New Worlds. Oh, <laughs> wow, that was uh, that's almost not, right in. With that's it. not very good. I tried. I'm not very musical, but uh, so I, I'm just you know gonna throw it out there. Loving Strange New Worlds season two. Terrific episodes so far. Uh, two episodes, I should say. Uh, like them both very much. Happy to see this cast, everybody back. I think it was a bold, somewhat of a bold strategy to sort of sideline your main character to send Pike away in the first episode of your second season. But I suppose he's been in a lot of it and you wanted to focus on other people. And I did like to see uh, Dr. Mbenga and, and Nurse Chapel kicking some butt, yes. which I thought was pretty cool. Yes. Um, but apparently, uh, uh, the actor who plays Dr. Mbenga is a jiu-jitsu master, so it was nice to see him actually fight. There you go, yeah. Um, in real life so um but yeah i really enjoyed that episode and of course it's great to see klingons again awesome yes um but i have a problem with the fact that uh, spock's like eh, i'll just steal the enterprise <laughs> because i feel like we've seen that before and obviously he does it again later in the cage so it's like spock has no problem stealing shit but i feel like vulcans who don't lie should probably not steal either but uh, i don't know yeah. that seemed like too easy a trope and they kind of got away with it too easily uh, and you want to talk about lazy writing? Uh, that to me was sort of, I don't know, not lazy. I enjoyed the whole idea of it, but uh, it was just like, meh, okay, that's fine. Um, I guess if your friend's in trouble, you go help her. And how do you get your friend back on the show for right, the second season? Right. Uh, and then I also have some questions about the second episode, but we can get into that in a second. But uh, what do you think of the premiere? Uh, I really liked the premiere. Uh, there was actually a real world uh, reason why Anson Mount was only in uh, a few minutes. Uh, his... Uh, his uh, wife had a baby, so uh, he. Well, I don't care. The show must go I on. It's more important. He asked that. for some time off to spend time, uh, which I'm like, well, they could have done the, the courtroom one as the premiere and shot it in the order that they did. And just, but anyway, um, I I'm not the one planning the show, so it's not up to me. No, you got to start. You got to start with action, dude. But yeah, no, I thought I thought it was a great premiere. Um, I liked seeing uh, because. I think people forget that this Spock is not, you know, the the stoic I'm eschewing all emotions one that we get in the original series. He's he's the touching plants and smiling uh, and laughing and stuff one that we saw in the cage still. So mm-hmm. um, I don't think it was too far out of character. Um, I do agree that he got off uh, <clears throat> pretty lightly with, uh, and that was kind of cleaned up a little too quickly. Um, but I, you know, I will say, uh, Carol Kane was the highlight of the premiere, and her character, um, yeah, it was just she's great, fantastic, and it was like, oh man, she's just outstanding. So I was very, very happy to see that she's going to be uh, at least recurring this year, and hopefully, mm-hmm. maybe she is uh, continues uh, for uh, subsequent seasons to be a part of the show because she was fantastic. Um, well, they do, they do need an engineer, so exactly uh, her her motivation to to want to go and sort of like let people get away with shit, I thought was perfect. It's like she just is a person, a being that lives a long time, yeah. And she's like, you know what, rules. Eh, everyone's gonna die anyway. Not me, obviously, but you fuckers. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, not me. But I want to see so how this plays just, out, and I'm bored. Yeah, so let's, let's just go. do what the fuck. Let's just do what the fuck we want to do. Yeah. So you're, you're, you know, I I love that. That made total sense. She's like I want to go on an adventure. I've been teaching at the academy too long. 
et cetera. I, I want to have some fun. Yeah. And that, that totally made sense that she would let Spock get away with it and kind of go along with it. Uh, but you're right. It, it is the sort of more emotional Spock, um, which I actually love how this sort of plays into the cage and into menagerie and into Spock as he becomes, as he clamps down on his emotions and maybe part of that motivation for him was his feelings for chapel. He had to put those in check, yes. right? Yep. Which he does. He doesn't want any fucking plum soup. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <He's> exactly. <clears throat> but it's like, so it, it is really interesting to see the character progression sort of starting from the beginning in a way, because yeah. Spock was definitely more emotional. Um, and then he has a great scene with, with him banging. He's like, you know, I, I don't like having these emotions. I don't want. He's like, you just have to live with it, motherfucker. You know? yeah, exactly. Like, like, he's like, like we all do. Welcome to the real world, yeah. man. You gotta live. Too with this bad, shit. dude. Like we all, you got too bad, dude. Yeah. And then Spock turns to alcohol to. No, wait, that's not. Or, he's and he gets sorry his, and he gets his little. He turns to sorry and brandy. Yeah. So it's it's and he gets his uh, little loot thing from he gets his loot. Yeah, he, got it, he exactly. gets it from Mbenga, which is great. But I I agree. Yeah. Uh, getting more about Mbenga and Chapel, they added some great depth to them and a nice little tie-in too to uh, Discovery because, you know, they're they're veterans of the Klingon War that we saw, um, well, that played out while they were in the Mirror Universe in uh, Discovery Season 1. Um, right. And we saw kind of the end of it when they came back. So that was a nice little uh, tie-in and callback. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought it was... It was pretty great. Everybody, uh, it, it's nice to have an episode where the, uh, I don't want to say secondary characters because they're all main characters, but to see... Supporting characters. Yeah, the supporting characters get a bit of a highlight. Um, you know, Uhura is uh, not a cadet anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of nice to get spotlight on them. Um, and then they still yeah, kind of continue yeah. that going into the second episode as well, which is kind of nice, but... Yeah, uh, Uhura uh, gets a nice uh, gets a nice scene with with, uh, with oh, I'm forgetting the character's name with Khan with Khan basically. Um, she's with uh, the and she's like, yeah. you know, I, I'm not going to break the rules for you. Yes, sorry, you know, I like that a lot. That was really that took a lot of guts for her to stand up, and that just proves that she's like taking ownership of the you know. Yes. And you see how Uhura is evolving into you know the uhura that she becomes in in the next you know in the original series but yeah you can see in, in how she's evolving in her confidence and has more to do and she won't she won't be intimidated she won't back down and uhura was a very strong character in the original series so i mean she didn't get a lot to do all the time but in this stuff that she did get to do you felt that nichelle nichols was really empowering her and being very you know very tough she doesn't fuck around yes. you know and well, I think that that's that they're getting to that, and I think she's going to get more to do. But yeah, seeing this stuff with Chapel and Mbenga was 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 awesome. Um, but in the second episode, you just I love that little bit where where Spock is on the stand and Chapel's like, you, "I fucking love you, man." Yeah, <laughs> you yes, just know. Yeah. They they show her. She's like, "He did such a good job. I'm so proud of you." She's just you like know. happy sigh. <laughs> yeah, because because you know because you know they fucked by now, right? Oh, I'm they sure. I I just love the. Did you feel like she was uh, withholding something from you uh, or some? Yeah. Yes. She's, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. She's a Gilbert and Sullivan fan, which is an, also a nice little callback to the Short Treks yep. uh, episode where they uh, where they meet, where he first boards the Enterprise, which is great. So right. nice little callbacks well, for in both these episodes. I feel like Gilbert and Sullivan have played a big role in Star Trek. I mean, Data was big on Gilbert yes. and Sullivan too. So. Um, yeah, it's it's it, the character episodes to me are, are are super interesting, and and if we're talking about the second episode, sometimes courtroom episodes can be boring or whatever. And of course, Star Trek has a fine history of courtroom episodes. Yes, um, I was thinking about Samuel T. Cogley, Attorney at Law, from way back in the original series. Like, where was um, he? Why, you know, where was he yeah. when Kirk gets? Yeah, when Kirk gets charged for murder, right? It's right. like that guy was was terrific, but uh, then he you know he defends the bad guy, but it's just. It was a really great episode, and you know, obviously, people are going to complain that it's too woke or whatever. But if you go back to the beginning, the first season, the first episodes of the, of Star Trek, there was this kind of thing. Yeah, and they're ta they're obviously not talking about that particular person and that particular character. They're talking about you know people who are different and perceived as different and exactly accepting everything. Yeah, it's just it was really well done, and I do love the fact that they figured out this whole technicality to to get you know to make everything okay that Pike was giving her uh, political asylum or whatever it was. That was, that was brilliant. That was really clever. Yes. So, and it reminded me of course of a uh, measure of a man, which is a great episode of uh, next generation with, with data is data human or is he a property of Starfleet? It's like no one is property, right? It's like, that's yes, bullshit. Exactly. So, 
I yeah. So re- really well done. I really liked. Um, I thought it was a really interesting Pike in the second episode because you know he he you know goes to a planet where he can't breathe to recruit the best uh, lawyer for right. Una. Um, but then I just loved the way he he refused to react. The rest of it, even when they were like to the point where. Well, we're going to court martial Pike too and bring him into this. He was like, "Nope, mm-hmm. I'm going to trust this because I know it's going to turn out okay." Um, although, you know, it's it's kind of weird because anything that happens with uh, Pike, any danger he's put in, um, right. is still, you know, he's going to be fine. Yeah, still mitigate because he knows he's like, "Yeah, I know this is going to work out because uh, I don't." Well, he does know. I die right, later, yeah. <laughs> or I get horribly disfigured later. So I'm still yeah. I'm still part of Starfleet and a captain or even an admiral at that point. So this is gonna be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting to, to to think about that too because do you think that makes him more reckless? I, I think it kind of does. Yeah. I think that that Anson Mount plays that a little bit too. It's like Pike, like you said, he knows the future. Yeah, and he knows what's going to happen, so he can definitely. Um, take more chances and be more, you know, cavalier about the rules because he knows the future. He knows it's all going to work. I mean, he doesn't know what was going to happen with, with Una, but he knows that he's going to be fine. So if he's going to be fine, then obviously she probably is too. Um, well, I think he can or, trust his people a little bit more too. It's like, all right, I'm, right, I'm going to let right. them make these decisions um, right. and get a consensus and then we'll move forward because I know I'm going to be okay. Um, and, you know, in, in, a, in a kind of a little bit expansion of that, I think everybody else will come through this okay with me. So I can, I can trust my pe. not that he wouldn't, but it's like, I can trust them and do, uh, you know, captain by committee more than just say, Nope, I'm the captain and we're going to do this. Right. So, right. Well, I'm sure they were trying to avoid like, you know, whatever quote unquote toxic masculinity. Cause I suppose you could make the case that Kirk was kind of a dick. Well, yeah. <laughs> in many ways. We'll get to find and, out cause he shows up this season. So, and, and a womanizing, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, well that, that's interesting. Uh, how will they change Kirk? Right. To sort of fit into the modern world. Like, cause this show is obviously being made today, not in 1969 or 68. Yeah. Um, where it was cool for the captain to bang all the green chicks. Will he do that now? I mean, even even they kind of played with that in, in the in the in the Star Trek movie with Pine. But Pine's, you know, that Kirk was like, he was a ladies' man, but he he grew up quickly. Yes, you know. And so, will they make Kirk that way, or will Kirk already be different? I don't know. Because we'll see. they're going. Well, we will see. Yeah, they're going for a different version of Pike, obviously. To to because he like like you said, he he has his cook. He cooks for the crew in his quarters. He's like very collaborative. Yeah. Um, but the good thing about somebody like this character about Pike is like, he doesn't have to say he's in charge, you know, right. he doesn't have to prove that he's the captain. He is the captain and they will take his orders and they will do whatever he says, but he doesn't have to be a dick about it. Right. Right. Cause he's very confident. He doesn't need to prove, which I think is interesting. Uh, the contrast between him and, and later on, uh, well, later on technically, but in like the cage or whatever, it's like, he's a different kind of Pike though, which is weird. I mean, Jeffrey Hunter's version of Pike is definitely, is definitely different. And it's I quite a few years that... before this though, but he's kind of like jaded and like kind of done with everything. Um, well, he, he maybe the idea of knowing his own death has gotten to him. Could right? be. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, I could not like this show more. It is so yes. thoughtful and so well done. Um, yeah, and the stealing the Enterprise, whatever, that's fine. Uh, the only other thing I had a question about in the second episode, which I enjoyed very much, was if La'an is a descendant of Khan, is she not genetically modified? Well, that's what they kind of were talking about that. It's like, well, then you know about you know people being genetic yeah, but why modified. isn't she but why isn't she being why isn't she in trouble well maybe why she's she not to join because, i mean khan uh you know augmented he him and his people but i don't know that he necessarily i mean did well, did if, his if descendants gen- if, uh keep keep that up or well no but i'm saying if khan was genetically modified uh then his descendants would have been quote unquote different than humans right they wouldn't be yeah true humans necessarily now maybe it's been enough time where that's been you know whatever or he um, had kids before he was genetically modified I, I suppose that's possible but i feel like he didn't have kids until he met uh, what's her face on the enterprise and then that's when he had children so how does i mean i guess if you if you're someone like khan and you're like you know no he had kids before he left earth in the 90s because he must have yeah he must have yeah. wouldn't be around if he didn't so yeah i guess that's true i guess yeah. that's true he must have he must have done a lot of fucking so. <laughs> 
He's like Genghis, Genghis Khan, King. you know. Right, right. So, but I guess my d- question isn't is, he Genghis Khan, we're all descended from, or whatever. So, I suppose because he liked to he liked to get busy. But uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting that if she really is a descendant, then I wonder if she is modified because well, they Her know that she is. So either she's been tested and she's not augmented. Um, I guess so. Or they're like, well, we'll give this one a pass because that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, like they said, it's like they, they, you know, maybe they don't care as long as it's not, Starfleet's not getting in trouble and not getting a black eye about it or whatever, but then right. they care now because it's public. So, yeah. but I feel like if your name is Khan, Nuni and Singh, you know, is it, that's your last name, you're going to get some shit for it because of, of yeah. know, the eugenics wars, which are, they talk about a lot in this episode, especially. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of, so if you have, if you, kind ca- of if you carry that name, a bit, but. It is, but then I assume they thought about it and they never reason. So yeah. maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm just. It doesn't matter because they do mention it in the court. Obviously, they mention right. it several times. Right. And so it's not a secret. It's not anything. And she admits it freely. It's like, yes, I am descended of of Khan right. Singh. Right. So I guess the genetic modifications probably don't carry over. Although she does seem pretty smart and strong. She does. So maybe. So I don't know. We'll see. Well, you know, maybe it's that the, that was not done. She didn't do it. It was it was just genetics that carried on through her li- her timeline and her life. It's not like the people that, that that Una comes from who did it to her, like in, in the present time when it was illegal. Yeah. So maybe yeah. maybe that's what yeah. maybe that's maybe that's the distinction because uh, Lon it was like before the laws were in place, right? Because she was a kid. It's not her. It'd fault. be like you know saying, well, you know, Vulcans are strong. Does that give them an advantage? Are they augmented? So maybe it's the same kind of thing because yeah. it's passed down instead of something that instead of her being genetically modified, like, okay, she's born now, so now we need a genetically modifier uh to fit in with the Noonian Sungs or whatever. So maybe that's the distinction is that it's not it's now like it's part of uh, her bloodline is like, oh, well, that's just how you are. Because I, th- I think if I'm remembering correctly, the Illyrians are genetically modified or augmented after they're born. They're not born that way, or maybe they are. I don't know. But see, now no, it's all they're, they're, well, no, I think they go, um, they go through a process. They they, they do yeah. their rituals, like she was right. talking about. So see? they do it. So, they yeah. do it on purpose after it's illegal in the Federation. So uh, with Lon, it wasn't her doing it. It just was something that happened before she was born. It's just like genetically carried on in her family line. Cause they talk about Lon <clears throat> was bullied as being called an augment and a monster um, yeah. and stuff like that. So I think it's, I think that's the distinction is genetically modified people. But if it's something that's passed down, you're not, you yourself aren't modified. So the Illyrians are They're they're born not modified and then they're modified during their rituals. So that, I think that's the, gotcha. probably the distinction there. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. So anyway, I mean, again, they brought it up for a reason. Yeah. So, uh, and I feel like the writers are pretty thoughtful on this show. They probably have thought about the history of, of Star Trek. I can right? imagine can it'll come def- back up again. So I imagine it will. And I imagine obviously the Gorn are going to come back up because like we need everybody, all of our skilled officers just in case. And they click on the show, the maps like Gorn territory. Bah, 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 you know, yeah. Whatever, dun, so. dun, dun. There's going to be a Gorn War, man, yeah. which is which is going to be cool. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, it's 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 great how they're exploring these characters and everybody's getting some business to do. Uh, we haven't really had an Ortegas uh, episode yet. I know, which I'm sh- which I'm sure is coming up. Yeah, um, and uh, maybe who and her and Uhura go and have some adventures or something. But uh, but yeah, I feel like Ortegas is the only one who really hasn't been explored. I mean, Mbenga you know, basically had a whole episode about him and, and, and Chapel seems to get a lot of screen time because everyone likes, uh, likes her. That, that actress Everybody too, just seems pleasure. really happy to be playing their roles and be on the show, which is yeah, kind of yeah. cool. Even, even when yeah. we get to the serious dramatic parts, it's like, everyone's just like, you get the sense that everyone's just giving their all, um, for the show. And it's really shows and just makes a really fun show. So. Exactly. It's a fun show. It is. It's a fun show. It's a fun show about monsters that kill you. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, at, at its best, uh, you know, science fiction explores the nature of humanity and, you know, and things like that. And that's that's what this show, I think, is doing a really good job at. As Star Trek has done for, for you know, 50 years or whatever, has explored what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be, you know, what, what does it mean to help others and serve others and <clears throat> you know what? What's the Federation? What's that? What are the highest ideals of the Federation? 
Um, it's an idealized, you know, what we could be, right? Our potential, human potential, and you know, whatever society potential. Yeah. Um, it's it's still an optimistic kind of show, which I appreciate because I think that's something that is something that people need still is is the idea that this is the future that we could have if we all kind of work together. So exactly. But but people are still there's still conflict. It's not like Roddenberry's idealized version of of the universe where no one fights or anything. Especially yes. the crew of the Enterprise never fights with each other. There's never any conflict with the with the crew. But it's like. Like even Picard says, we work to better ourselves. We don't think about you know money and this other bullshit now. Yeah, we don't worry about but that there's other things more, so. that people. Yeah, I, I never. We got, we got lizards. Space lizards are going to come. In, yeah, you know, so yeah, exactly. So yeah, no, well, I, yeah, really it's, fun it's show. And, and yeah, I'm bummed that I'm bummed that there's a third season, but we won't get it for a long time. <sighs> yes. But I understand why. Uh, solidarity with all the writers. Absolutely. And everything. So I'm I'm fine with that. I'll wait. But it's it's sad that you know we're not going to get. Come on, studios, get your shit together. Come on. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So, um, do you want to do you want to pick anything? Yeah, let's. Well, should we go to picks? Sure. You want to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Um, Age before beauty, as they say. Uh, yeah, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm gonna pick a podcast called, uh, and this actually ties into Star Trek slightly. Uh, the, is, is it this? Is it this podcast? No, the podcast is uh, Don't Ask Tig. Um, it's uh, a long-running podcast from Tig Notaro, who is on oh, yeah. Star Trek Discovery. Um, but it's an advice um, uh, podcast, um, and uh, Tig Notaro admits that she's not an expert on anything, so she brings on guests for whatever the topic is uh, that they're going to have, whether it's like how to give yourself a haircut or uh, lost love. Um, various things. Uh, one of the reasons why this is particularly coming up uh, for me recently is uh, coming up in, uh, I guess, the week of July 4th, uh, the episode that she's airing then uh, has a Facebook friend of mine, Joe Wilson, another Joe, who is going to be on another it. Joe. And this is a guy I've been friends with, and we've had quite a few conversations, as it turns out. Um, so a little bit more than just uh, internet friends, but uh, we've been friends for a number of years. Uh, had some great conversations. He's done. Uh, he's he was a stand-up comic. He's written uh, some web shows that he's done and some comic books. Um, and he has been battling cancer and going through chemo for the last uh, oh, uh, year and a half. Um, and he's been chronicling this on his Facebook page and very open about it. And uh, as he points out, uh, 18 months ago he was given 15 year months to live. And he's in uh, overtime now. Um, he's doing pretty well. Um, and he's going to be on TIG's show to talk about, uh, you know, cancer and chemotherapy and what that is actually like and what it goes through. Um, he, he does videos on uh, Facebook, but uh, it's, a, it's a really inspiring story. And I'm very happy that um, he's able to get a forum for this. It turns out he and uh, TIG know each other from... Uh, stand-up days back in the day in LA. Um, sure. So uh, it's, uh, you know, don't ask Tig. Uh, you should listen to the podcast anyway because it's a lot of fun and Tig Notaro is just is great. And she's had her own, uh, I think everyone knows, she's had her own battle with cancer as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to this episode, but it's a great podcast. Anyway. <clears throat> so there you go. Don't ask Tig. Check it out. Yeah, she's got she's got a lot of cool guests on. Uh, Tony Hawk was on. Yeah, uh, Allison yeah. Janney. She had people from Star Trek on there, and yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, several people from Star Trek. What a surprise! Yeah. But uh, that's okay. Wilson Cruz was on. I like Wilson Cruz. He's cool. Anthony Rapp. Yep. Right? they're cool guys. Um, yeah, I, I love Tig Notaro. She's, she's super funny. I mean, you say she's she. I would say she's an expert at being funny and being yes, cool. So that's that's very that's much not so. easy. Yes. Um, well, mine is not nearly as uh, as. What's the word? As socially relevant, I guess, as, this, as yours might have been. <laughs> Poignant, thank you. But it does have its charms, and it's one of my favorite shows. Uh, and we already talked about it before, but my pick is The Bear Season 2. Ah, yes. Um, yes. Yes, Jeff. Um, I'm just saying, if you love shows about conflict <laughs> and dysfunctional families... There you if, go. If any, if any of that resonates with you, it's and also if you love cooking, which I do... Um, if you love fucked up people doing interesting things, uh, the bear is for you. I mean, it's just there's no normal people in this show, really, except maybe, <laughs> maybe one of the characters uh, who comes in this season to uh, to interface with uh, Jeremy Allen White's character, uh, Carmi. But uh, it's just, 
and again, I have to say that the Christmas episode is like cringe worthy, but also super awesome because you like watch it going, man, my family is not nearly this fucked up. So <laughs> well, that's as bad good. as you think, as bad as you think your Christmas dinners have been, this one is worse. <laughs> so it'll help you feel better about your own family. It'll help you feel better about yourself. Obviously it's taken to, uh, well, I don't know. I don't really know if it's taken to an extreme level for dramatic purposes or if people go through this kind of feel thing. I kind of feel like people do. Um, I was lucky growing up that my family didn't really talk to each other that much, but we certainly weren't this kind of antagonistic to each other, but, uh, it's, it's just a terrific show. The first season, you know, is always in the restaurant basically and, and talks about that kind of thing. But this one is more out of the restaurant cause they're struggling to, to, to transform it into something else. Um, but also honor the legacy of of Carmen's brother, uh, whose restaurant it was. He inherited. It's no secret that his his brother killed himself. That's how the show starts, um, and so it deals with depression and mental illness, and it deals with family trauma, and it deals with all that stuff. It's it, but in a in a terrific way. So anyway, watch the bear, watch season one, and then watch season two, and just see what I mean. There's a reason. It, I I don't know if I believe in Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, but it's a hundred percent. So it can't totally suck. They're both seasons are like 100%. So everyone, you know, it says, quote unquote, universal acclaim. So <laughs> it's it's a great fucking show and you should watch it. All right. So there you go. That's my that's my pick. There you go. I'm, I'm saying this to you, Joe, but I'm also saying it to No, I know you're saying you. it Definitely. to me. I know. That's fine. You should be watching The Bear. Okay. Um, and Silo. I'll get to it. And yeah. Silo. Yes, you should definitely watch Silo, dude. I think, I, I really want to know what you think of it. I don't know okay. if you're going to, it's, 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 I recommend the show to people, but I don't know that it's a show for everyone. If that makes Which sense. Which one, Silo? Silo, yeah. See, Whereas the bear, I think, has something for everybody because uh, everyone has family, everyone has issues in their lives, everyone has trauma, everyone has trouble, um, and and they have to overcome it. And you know, and I think people are sort of, for better or worse, sort of fascinated by the restaurant business. Uh, obviously, primarily, I think because of Anthony Bourdain and, and people like that. But it's just it's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting kind of life that people choose, and the dynamic of you know back of house kind of work in a restaurant is is fascinating it always has been to me i only did a tiny bit of it and i i did not uh, it did not take with me because i don't like being yelled at that much <laughs> but uh, but uh, but i can totally you know i can totally relate I, and it's just it's just a terrific show and everyone's so good in it so anyway i guess i'm just too concerned with silo being um the same thing as snow <clears throat> piercer and i i keep hearing it's not so i will give it a chance but I mean, the the only kind of parallels, I suppose, to, to, to Snowpiercer is that there's somewhat of like a class system in the silo, um, but there's not like that kind of open warfare, like fighting to get to the front of the train, people eating bugs, right, <laughs> any of that right. shit. It's literally uh, like 10,000 people in a silo living for some reason, but they have like levels that have crops. They have levels that have power, the power levels in the bottom. They have like mines for digging up materials. Um, it's just like, the, but, the, but the question is why is some, why is like the history of the silo forbidden? Why is like, why can't you have these artifacts or whatever uh, about the okay. past? Why can't you, why can't you know the truth, bro? <laughs> well, and so, and why, do, well, and more importantly, why do people go out to clean? And when they go out to clean, why do they actually clean? Gotcha. Instead of just saying, fuck it, I'm not going to do it. Why do they do it? Right. And what's outside? Can we open the door? No, we're all going to die. So it's like, how do you know we're going to die? Okay. How do you know we're going to die? Because that's what people say. But can we trust people? Right. And like everyone, who's, who's, you know, who can you trust? And speaking of Snowpiercer, I hope we get to see the final anyway. season someday. It's completed, but then it got canceled and TNT said, ah, we're not going to air the final season. Well, so. I yeah, I'm sure it'll show up somewhere, but TNT is not doing anything anymore, no. right? So who knows? Yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway, so find the Flickcast at the usual places, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Good Pods, etc. It seems like the move to, to new hosting has not, uh, not affected it, so the Yay. show is showing up where it should be, so that's good. Um, so enjoy that. And Joe and I are on the socials. Joe is at What Joe Writes. I am at Chris Yu or Ulrich Picks. And of course, the Flickcast is at the Flickcast, and you probably already know all this stuff, but I feel compelled to say it every time. Absolutely. So, um, anything else, Joe? I think that's it. All right. So, everyone, thank you so much uh, for listening, and uh, for Joe Dilworth, I'm Chris Ulrich. That was the Flickcast. Have a great, have a great time. Have a great life. <laughs> we'll see you next week. I don't know what I'm saying. How do I get out of this show, man? Thank you, everybody. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Bye.